after acquiring a lot of leftover parts over the years, we had a thought. Would it be possible to create an ultimate Game Boy using leftover bits? After searching through piles of junk, we managed to find an original orange Game Boy Advance shell as well as a broken DSi unit. Our initial thought process was, could these two parts be combined to create an ultimate Game Boy? Well, we decided to act on that thought and see what came to mind. In the past, we've installed a DS Lite into a Game Boy Advance console, and that was no easy feat, so installing a DSi would be next level. The first and most difficult part of the build was how were we going to fit the 3.25 inch screen into an original Game Boy shell. So we slowly went about cutting pieces out of the shell to see how the original screen would fit. After some initial cuts and machining, we knew this was going to be more difficult than we first expected. All the upper shell supports and fittings had to be machined to ensure that the LCD fit. We also wanted to retain the original touch screen. After creating an initial fitment for the LCD screen, we focused our attention on machining the rear of the shell as well as the electronics. Just like a DSi macro, we stripped the internals down to their bare minimum. By removing all unnecessary components and soldering a fuse to ensure that the bottom screen was the only one functioning. To ensure that the DSi motherboard fit, we had to do a lot of trimming. All four sides of the original DSi motherboard were trimmed as well as the earphone jack removed and bridged. This would enable just enough room for a battery to fit and the shell to close properly. Being a DSi, the motherboard was a lot wider and higher than a DSi light unit. So it was evident that more machining was required to the original Game Boy Advance shell. It was pleasing to see a basic outline coming to shape. However, we still knew there was a lot more machining to do on the rear of the shell to ensure that the cartridge slot would fit. As we wanted to retain the original DSi cartridge slot, we knew that this would involve a lot more machining of the shell. So we went about removing the original battery compartment from the Game Boy Advance shell and machining out a section for the DSi cartridge slot. As we wanted this console to have DS functionality, as well as Game Boy Advance through emulation, we knew that we had to drill out an additional two holes for the front faceplate and two for the rear trigger buttons. Our plan was to modernise this console by adding tactile buttons. Tactile buttons would be added for the controls, trigger buttons and power button. Then all that was left to do was some basic soldering and some bridging of the wiring. For the directional key, we felt it would be easier using the original Game Boy Advance mechanism. So we went about machining off a piece from our unrepairable Game Boy Advance motherboard for this project. We then went about removing all unnecessary electronic components from the piece to ensure that it fit in the shell. To make life easier, we used all the original soldering points on the Game Boy Advance directional pad, as well as creating a section for the earth wire. This would ensure that the feel of the directional pad was as close to original as possible. To make future work easier, we then went about labelling all the wiring for future soldering to the original DSi board. Our next task was to ensure that the LCD screen was clean for fitment. We went about removing the original touchscreen panel, cleaning it and then assembling it again, before installing into the Game Boy Advance shell. Continuing with the orange and black theme for this console, we knew that we had to do something about the Game Boy Advance cartridge slot. So we recycled and trimmed down a cover from an original DSi light unit. The next part of the build involved finding an initial spot for the speakers and USB-C rechargeable port. With all the previous pre-wiring for the buttons and directional key, soldering to the PCB was an easy task. We then went about mocking the original DSi motherboard in place and finding a spot for the rechargeable battery. To take this console one step further and to create an ultimate Game Boy out of junk, we decided to remove the original DSi camera from the unit, as well as the Wi-Fi antenna, which would be placed at the rear of the shell. 
After careful consideration, we decided to move the location of the USB-C charging port to the rear of the show, like an aftermarket Game Boy Advance console. Due to the confined space and tight fitment of this build, we had to relocate the original trigger buttons to the rear of the show. All we had left was basic electronics, mounting the rear digital camera, and a custom screen bezel left, and the console was almost on its way to be completed. With the remaining electronics and soldering completed, it was now just a matter of screwing the shell together before focusing on the custom screen bezel. As we wanted to retain the original touch screen, we knew we couldn't use a glass or a plastic screen bezel, so we had to fabricate one from scratch using one millimeter thick perspex. This involved using an original screen, cutting out a template and covering it in vinyl. So after weeks of fabrication, we finally completed our latest build, the Junk Boy Game Boy Advance DSi console. This hybrid console features A and B X and Y tactile buttons, tactile power button located on the front of the shell. We also retained the original DSi cartridge slot, installed the trigger buttons on the rear, as well as a digital camera. We also used a more heavy duty battery from a DSi XL console and managed to install a USB-C charging port. As discussed at the beginning of the video, we want to retain as many of the DSi components as possible. Retaining the touch screen was one of them. To do this, we had to create a custom screen bezel made out of one millimeter thick perspex. This would enable enough flex to touch the screen. We also managed to retain the original digital camera that came with the DSi unit. We felt that the best location for this digital camera would be at the rear of the shell. And just like the original DSi unit, all photos and videos are stored internally. We also retain the same functionality as the DSi unit, where the trigger buttons are used to take photos. One of the downfalls of using the DSi internals compared to the DS Lite internals is that there is no firmware flashing enabling screen swapping capabilities. So this limits you to the number of DS games that only play on a single screen. However, there are still a number of classic games that still use single screen, such as Castlevania, Chrono Trigger, Tetris, and Mortal Kombat, just to name a few. With a firmware upgrade or an R4 flash card, the DSi console is capable of playing all your classic games from Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Atari, and DOS, just to name a few. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have more consoles coming with DSi internals. We hope that our videos have inspired and showed you that you can create a custom console out of pieces of junk for under $50.